Michael, I guess this is the first kind of real media you might have done since that Titanic fight with uh, Justin Gaethje last month. Um, can you just kind of give us your feelings and, and thoughts about that match uh, four weeks later? Yeah, I mean, it was what I expected. You know, I expected Justin to come in there and be tough. I didn't expect him to be able to, you know, take my shots as hard as I was giving him, you know. Um, but, you know, I felt like things could have went a little differently with that fight, for sure. Um, and I really got comfortable. I don't, I don't, I'm not one to make excuses or anything, but I was knocked out of that fight. You know, I caught a headbutt in, like, the first round really early. That kind of changed it a little bit, thanks for me. So I really don't remember much from that fight at all. I just remember I had to just keep throwing and keep fighting. And next thing I know, uh, the fight was over with. And when I go back and watch it, I just, uh, I get upset with myself because... I wish I would have known it was like 12 seconds left, you know, but I had to get out of the way of the knees and, you know, he put a lot of pressure on me and it was a toss up at that point, you know, I and mean, I had him hurt quite a bit and you know, I wasn't really fully hurt. I was just needed a little rest. <laughs> Can you take any solace in the fact that, you know, several fans are calling this the fight of the year so far. Is there any kind of something you can take from that? I mean... I was on the losing end of a fight of the year, you know, so I can take pride in being in the fight of the year, but at the same time, it's like I lost, so there's really not much pride going with losing, you know, but um, where I get the pride is, though, that we did put on a great fight for the fans, and everybody appreciated that, you know, and um, especially in this time of day, you know, um, fans aren't really getting what they deserve in fights, what they look forward to, so if I can go in and put on a fight like that for the fans, then I'll be happy to do that. Mike, uh, yesterday you, at the Q&A you mentioned that you wanted to drop down to featherweight. Why featherweight and why now? Um, you know, it's always been a thought in my head to, to drop down. You know, regardless how I was doing in this division, win or lose. You know, that was kind of a plan of mine to drop down to 45, test the waters, come back up to 55 maybe because um, I've fought everybody in the top 10 in the 55 and I've fought numerous of people and I just wanted some new changes, some new faces and um, to see how I react to there. So it has nothing to do with the fact that I lost against Justin. Even if I would have won, 45 still would have been a thought in my mind. So. You said you wanted to fight Jose Aldo. Um, if Aldo is not available, anyone else on the radar? The next toughest guy in line. You know, I think maybe that's like detrimental to my career. Maybe hurts it a little bit that I always go for the toughest fight. You know, but my first fight at 145, um, Aldo is a former champ. You know, he's one of the best in the world, always been. So that's a guy that I would love to fight. You know, I'm, I'm not in this sport to fight. Oh, the guy that's okay. You know, I want the toughest guy. I want everybody that says he can't be beat because I like to prove people wrong sometimes. Have you talked to the UFC about this move down yet? And what was their response? Um, they're up for it. You know, they like it. Um. I think that we have a really good relationship because I'm going to good fights, you know, regardless of where it's going to be, whatever night. So, um, fingers crossed, hopefully a big fight comes in 45 because, um, you know, in order for me to make that drop, it has to be a big fight. You know, it's going to be quite a bit of weight for me. So. And uh, yeah, have you kind of game planned of how you're going to get down to featherweight? I've been in Amsterdam for about four yeah. days, man. I've been eating ice cream and cakes and candy and, you know, so I haven't thought about how I'm going to get down after this, but I'll, I'll get down somewhere, somehow. Have you got, like, a target date in your mind? Um, I was looking towards December. Um, you know, November got brought up, so we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see everybody's schedules and um, see where they can fit me in. And the interim uh, lightweight uh, title is just been announced, so Tony Ferguson versus Kevin Lee. What are your thoughts on that fight? Congrats to both of those guys for uh, working their way up and getting the interim title shot. You know, hats off to them. Um, it's going to be a great fight. You know, they're both tough, but they're both very, you know, beatable. So uh, it's a toss up to me. So good luck to both of them. There was a few bit of spikiness between you and Gaethje in the lead up to that fight. Did you have any words after? No, it was just a little respect, you know, um, all the things in the beginning of the fight might have been my fault a little bit. I think I pushed the edge too much and um, that's usually not me, you know, so I kind of let it slide and come out of me and run my mouth a little bit. That um, puts me in bad positions because now I got to, you know, back all that up and then I go in and that's putting a lot of pressure on me in my fights and, um, you know, that was a mistake on my part. So no hate or no ill will, you know what I'm saying, just try to sell it a little bit and um and now we're here. You're here with Desmond Green tonight. Um, what can we kind of expect from him and how, how much of an impact do you think he's going to make in the UFC? Um, I think he's going to make a huge impact in the UFC. Um, you know, he's a definitely a young, hungry, upcoming fighter and, um, you know, he's going to come in and put in a great fight. You know, um, he loves traveling and going overseas and, you know, putting on you know, great fights. So let's hope and pray that we see that tonight.